Joining us now this morning, Dr. Alan Kleiger, a clinical professor of medicine at Yale, as well as Dr. Suzanne Watnick, the chief medical officer at Northwest Kidney Centers and the professor of medicine at University of Washington. Good morning to you both. Hi. Thanks for being with us. And let's just jump right in because uh, dialysis safety is something of utmost importance when you're talking about kidney health. Why is leadership so important? Uh, dialysis and care is a team sport. Um, uh, few nephrologists have been trained in leadership skills, yet we're called on when we're medical directors of dialysis facilities to work with nurses, to work with other professionals, and to work with patients in order to get good quality care and safe care. Um, but that can't happen just because we know the right things to do. That has to happen when we can, as a team, have the kind of leadership that prioritizes the right things to do, uh, works with our patients and their priorities to get the right things to do. So that leadership is a critical element in making sure we get the job done right. And you were telling me earlier about the rate of infection when it comes to dialysis is concerning. Yeah, it sure is because uh, of all patients who don't survive each year, 11% of them die as a direct result of infections. Uh, the majority of which are potentially treatable so that it's a real opportunity to stop dialysis unit infections and to target zero infections, which is what our nephrologist transforming dialysis safety has been focused on. And I'll take that ball from you because you know what you're talking about is critical and it is so important to partner. Right now through the nephrologist transforming dialysis safety initiative, there are a number of initiatives that you're taking. It's really been not just one portion, but a three-legged stool that you've been looking at. So fighting infections, trying to um, bring out leadership skills for people, and also looking at the human factors that come into how to take, best take care of patients. Um, we've partnered at Northwest Kidney Centers with the Nephrologist Transforming Dialysis Safety folks um, to bring training to nephrologists, which is critical. It's always important to have good leadership skills as a nephrologist, but now we really are being asked to be the captain of the ship. With some of the new kidney care models that are coming out, we've seen Alex Azar, the Secretary of Health and Human Services, actually speak to that. Yep. and. Um, We've seen how important it is to make sure that we are trained so that we can lead into the future to make sure we're doing the best we can to take great care of our patients. Can you elaborate a little bit more on the specifics that you are implementing when it comes to fostering leadership in the community? Absolutely. So if you can imagine, some people have more leadership training than others, but nobody is typically systematically trained to do leadership training. So um, the ne Nephrologist Transforming Dialysis Safety um, Group actually came to Northwest Kidney Centers to help understand how who we were, how to train us to lead in the medical um, sphere and in the dialysis facility. We learned about what um, le leadership traits we actually had, how to manage conflict, how to work in a partnership with the nurse manager mm -hmm. as a dyad partnership and um, we're going to bring that into the facilities with another six months of training we're going to hold webinars you're going to provide mentorship for various projects that are being done and we're really excited because we think that this the beginning of this training is going to start a trend we hope we can really fan it out throughout the country and i think it really will make a difference to making sure that we're dialyzing patients as safely as possible you speak about that partnership. How would you envision uh, nurses and physicians working in the future together to try and implement this vision? The nurse manager, who is one of the leaders in the facility, has a lot of important roles. The nephrologist, who's the medical director, also has a number of important roles. And sometimes those two people are busy just with the, the, the shower of things that come right. to be done. So to take some time every month to sit down, for example, in the, under the auspices of a, a regular monthly meeting of the interdisciplinary team, making sure there are conversations that are happening, making sure that um, they're bringing together the community of the entire dialysis facility so that the patients know that there's a partnership being present on the dialysis floor. So there are a number of initiatives that we're doing to try to bring that dyad partnership um, to a greater recognition. And I think with the NTDS, um, group, we're hopefully going to be successful as we move forward for that. What's the biggest obstacle that you have to overcome in order to see this vision come to fruition? Oh, yeah, it's a great question. <laughs> uh, the biggest obstacle is to help 
both nurses and doctors understand that their role as leaders uh, goes beyond their role as clinician. It's a role as leader that encompasses setting the direction and the priorities for the facility and inspiring the people around them to do the right thing. And is there a reason that there is such a focus on getting this leadership training right now in the world of nephrology right now? I really think that there is. Again, as I mentioned before, there are new models of care that are coming. Almost half of all patients on Medicare right now, which makes up 80% of all patients on dialysis, are going to be randomized likely to a model of care. And there needs to be somebody, some group, in the dialysis facility to help lead that. And who better than the nurse who's on the front lines and the medical director who's also helping to lead. The time is right and the time is now. We need to take care of patients with kidney disease throughout their entire life with kidney disease. And dialysis is just one portion of that. And I think if you have strong leaders in that dialysis facility, you can help patients understand what the best route is for them, whether it is to be caring for themselves in a certain way on dialysis or looking for transplant, for example. If indeed our future is to get up to 50 or 60 or 80% of patients at home or transplanted, um, which is a huge gap to get to, it means that many more patients will be independent Many more patients will have challenges of preventing infection uh, who are right now uh, probably at higher risk of infection because uh, patients who, who choose to be home now are sort of the top of the iceberg. But if you double or triple the number of patients going home, those with more risk for uh, uh, errors and for infections are likely to be going home. How are we gonna manage that? How are we gonna figure out how that works and works safely? That will really take some leadership and leadership direction. So the future is a real challenge now. Collaboration never been more important. That's mm -hmm. right, that's exactly mm -hmm. right. Absolutely. All right, Dr. Alan Kleiger, Dr. Suzanne Watnick, thank you so much for your time this morning, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.